Hey yo, let's talk about it. Steven Crowder. The Civil War in the conservative space started off with Daily Wire versus Crowder. Well, actually, Daily Wire versus The Blaze and all of them going out there, Crowder. You know, he's trying to do some little, um, kind of what Charlamagne is doing, you know, where he just recruit Negro podcast. He's not, Crowder's not trying to do that, but similar, like trying to get the young conservative podcasters to come over to his team. But he's talking about ownership, whereas Charlamagne is talking partnership, but we've already heard that debate before. But that was a big spat a, couple, a month or so ago, and now the threats that your girl Candace made have come to light. She's exposed Steven as a monster. Let's talk about it. So let's keep it a buck. Um, there's a civil war right now in the service spaces when it comes to media and whatnot, tech and censorship and all that other stuff, and then that morphed into personal attacks from Candace and Steven. Um, full disclosure, uh, I don't really mess with Steven Carter's content. I stopped watching it. Although I think that what he was doing is needed in a conservative space. I think they need skits and that type of element to combat the corny shit you've seen. It's so much content that like, if, if the media wasn't biased, if Hollywood wasn't biased, the jokes you can have about Nancy Pelosi and her husband situation, the shit that happened with Andrew Gillum and when he was, you know, that could have been your governor of Florida. Like, God damn, Booty Bandit, Andrew Gillum could have been your governor. Um, but I'm just saying, like, comedy has been trashed the last few years because the biasness. Like, they're not making the jokes at the left. They're not making fun of clear, funny shit that they can make fun of when it comes to the left. Right? They do it. And it's, it's, like, it's like to the point where it's like we've heard it all before and it's not that exciting anymore you know what i mean we've, we've, we've seen that but i think that the right needed something like what carter was doing with the skits and making fun of the left and making fun of you know the, the young turks and democrat politicians there needs to be that balance unfortunately he's a dickhead but i think what he was doing is needed the right definitely needed that like if you know, I, I, I don't again i'm not a follower of the daily wire and bishop pro either I don't understand how people think that Hollywood is trash and run by people with little hats. And then the conservative says, hey, let's go start a Hollywood thing or an anti-Hollywood thing or alternative to Hollywood with another motherfucker that wears small hats. <laughs> I don't get that part. But, um, uh, yeah, I, I, so I, I would never, you know, what Glenn Beck did with The Blaze, what Ben, um, ben Shapiro's doing with Daily Wire, what, uh, Carrado was doing with his skits and whatnot and all that stuff. All that's needed on the right. They need that type of stuff. They need to break away and stop begging. I've always said the one night that the black folks have in common with the conservatives is the Oscar night because the liberals in Hollywood don't want neither one of y'all there, right? And you have to create your own content instead of crying and bitching the moaning that they won't give you access, they won't give you awards, whatever. You gotta do your own thing. Unfortunately, black people haven't learned that lesson yet. They're still begging to be at a seat at somebody else's table. Unfortunately, his movie sure trash, but Tyler Perry said, I'm not trying to sit at nobody else's table. I'm trying to create my own. But yeah, so I do acknowledge that all that stuff is needed. I just, the George Floyd shit thing to me that Carter did the knee on the neck, that shit was foul. And I know some, I'm team pro BLM and support that situation. It was more like, yeah, this is the one time that everybody was on the same accord. Everybody was looking at the situation like, damn, the cop killed that man. He was on his neck or whatever. But then all the grifters, Candace, Tim Pool, Crowder, they all had to come up and like stump on that moment. Like they put that fire out that was could have led to some real change, real reforms. And he got squashed because of the grifting. And I think that and that's when I was like, yeah, this dude is doing too much. Despite me thinking what he's doing is needed from the conservative and for the right to counter all the corny shit we see from the left and all the not funniness we see from Trevor Noah. The Daily Show, from all these late night sitcoms, all trash. And the five isn't even funny on Fox. Like, they're not funny. But it's just, they're killer late night right now because there's some type of a balance. There's some type of, there's different jokes. Like, it's not the same shit over and over. I like, what was that, Tim? Um, Last Man Standing with Tim from Home Improvement. Like, that show was just refreshing to hear jokes about liberal. And guess what? The show is still balanced. He was a conservative right-wing dude who owned a gun sporting shop or managed one because his, his buddy was the owner. And yet his daughters were too liberals and leftists and whatnot. And they were still balanced 
in the show, despite it being a show that the conservatives liked. Um, they tried to do Devil Rose in, that situation got fucked up because of Planet of the Apes. I mean, Valerie Jarrett, horrible as Slim Landlord, black people would put on the capes for her. Because she did look like what Roseanne said she looked like. And I believe Roseanne when she said she didn't know that she had some black in her. And whatever. But that show was probably attempting to do the same thing. Give you Just give some balance. Clearly, the daughters would have been leftist. Roseanne's sister was liberal. So it would, again, it was, it, even though it was a show that right-wingers would have liked. And gave the, the obviously, ABC, it was their best rated show at the time. It outdid black-ish. Right? But... And the black woman who brought Roseanne on knew what she was doing. She had to fire her too, but still, she brought her on for the right reasons because that it worked for the network. It gave them what they were looking for. So I'm saying balance is always key and it's good because everything is just too liberal and trash. It's to the point where you just be watching shit and just be like, damn, like everything is a TED talk when you watch shows. Like, what the fudge? Like, everything. Like, I'm watching The Equalizer. Now, I know the original show was about uh, the white dude who was old, who was washed. CIA agent, whatever, or spook, who was going around helping the community, whatever. But even with that being said, like you watching this new shit with Queen Tifa, it's like everything feels like a TED talk, and everything feels like the 1619 Project or something like that. I wrote the script. It's like that takes away from to me from art when it's that obvious. Like you know, you don't even hide it. It's just everything is a damn PSA. But that being said, when it comes to Crowder and this shit, he's getting his smoke. He getting all the smoke from everybody. I think some people are exaggerating the argument in the video clip. I, I can't. I think that, especially black folks, we know damn well when we argue and there's situations going on, it's worse than what you saw in that video. I'm not going to. Of course, it does look bad, but I'm not going to throw on the cat, right? Like, he's a monster. He's this and that. Yeah, it's not a good look that he was doing it for his wife. It's not a good look for the whole social conservative get married before you have kids get married before you have sex you did all that did everything the right way and then that shit 10 15 years later ends in the divorce she's gonna end up being a single mom and you're gonna be back out there in them streets <laughs> right and it's a lot of money and wealth transfer gonna go in between that and all that stuff so for you to be on the right speaking out against that which i'm sure that those laws are in place but partly because of right-wing men who felt like women need to be taken after divorce or whatnot. Um, and now you speak out against that and you don't want her to get all your money. It's like, damn, it's a bad look. And all the other liberal channels are going to go after it. And I don't see the credibility of Carter to go to these meetings anymore and talk about pro-family and all that stuff. Like, it's, it's different now. But, yeah, Crowder... He, met, he fumbled the bag by having this stuff leaked. And again, it was leaked stuff. So, again, it's like, I'm not going act fake like that was uh, the most horrible conversation I've ever had there's context you don't know if he's having his breakdown his moment where he's getting his shit off because you know he's been asking her to do wifely do these things and she's not doing them and he's paying all the bills and providing and doing all those things but she not doing her end if that was his way of exploding and responding to that if he felt like he's not getting love in their marriage and he felt like he's doing what he's supposed to do and she's not doing what she's supposed to do I'm not gonna throw cap on that Again, it's not a good look, though, being that she is pregnant, being that she wasn't being aggressive and she was chilling. It does look bad. I'm not going to say that. But I'm not going to throw salt, gasoline on the fire. He's a monster. He's evil. Like what Candace is doing and stuff like that. Like, nah. I'm not going to do that. It's just, that was some lightweight stuff. That's that's a passive-aggressive Canadian uh, uh, dispute in marriage or whatever. Now, I think Crowder's putting cap on it because he's like, my my children deserve privacy and this and that, but you did a George Floyd knee on the neck skit. Like his kid didn't gonna see that, or, you know what I mean? Like you didn't care about the privacy of his children and his family in that situation either. You're a public figure. Your family by proxy is a part of that. You know how it is. You're an actor, and you were clearly acting in all those videos where you're talking about Daily Wire, where you recorded your own friend. That's some bitch ass shit. Um, you be acting. So you know that 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 it's public game. Um, Candace didn't extort you because there was no money in exchange for her ever. But uh, yeah, I just think that is a bad look for conservative right right now. Um, people get divorced every day; they're no different. Like it'd be funny when like feminists be like, "The black men lost the uh, the race war. The black men lost the culture war. 
blase blah. I'm like, no, all men did in America in 1960 something. That abortion pill killed everybody's patriarchal right wing uh, traditional standard stuff. Like all of those men lost that battle to the left, to the culture war. Right? It wasn't just black men. All right wing men or traditional type men lost that war. And this is not a good look. No divorce. That abortion pill, it changed the game, and we never going back. That toothpaste is not going back in the tube. So now we're gonna have what what what's next for Crowder? Like how does he have any credibility when it comes to the family, pro family, all that type of stuff? Like not saying that you can't be rehabilitated and address that, but it's like it's already hard enough for relationships in this day to grow and people are giving up on marriage and the traditional structure and for you to say I did it the right way and then it didn't work out it's like that's gonna be used as fuel against that idea like and, and women have already been doing that women who are married and single moms versus the women who never got married they trying to act like they in the same boat and not act like it's different but it is what it is this is my video what is it my my, my 10 minutes I ain't want to go too hard on this but I got jokes. Uh, Steve is going to get all the jokes because he's a skit writer and a fake comedian. So he's going to get these jokes as he deserves them. But maybe he should have been focused on his marriage and his family instead of, you know, doing knee on the neck George Floyd skits. <laughs> now his wife about to be out there just in time for stepdaddy season. And, you know, she's going to get half his money and go get to be with somebody else. Hey, he's Canadian. She gets to go out there and go back in them streets and he will do the same, obviously. But will it be more scrutiny on him? Is he going to wait for marriage again? Or is he going to be out there in the streets trying to tap that conservative Putang out there? And it's funny, too, because I know they had that one um, when all them black folks went to the White House, the MAGA hats on and stuff like that. And I'm friends and associates with some of the people on social media that were there. And there was a lot of ratchetness going on there. There's a lot of ratchetness that was going on. I think that one gangster Haitian dude who died allegedly the monster let's just say that a lot of conservatives still defend him I think he was Haitian or some shit I mean, you know, one of those non ADOS for speaking on black Americans but on, from the right uh, he he was there and women are saying he was he apparently out there giving out free pain and people were cheating on their spouses and whatnot a lot of ratchetness was going on there so I think the hypocrisy is coming to light that, you know, the conservative traditional family structure, right wing stuff, although those things may be right to say and preach and, and, and promote, a lot of these people aren't living up to that lifestyle, even on the right. It is what it is. The only difference is the left just embraces that ratchetness. The right acts like they don't partake in it too, and we know that's not true. There's some toe tapping Republicans out there just like Andrew Gillum booty banded ass was too. That's my video about louder maybe he may come back rebranded and stop being such a dickhead and you know chill out but i was watching the black conservative perspective and he did a video with somebody that tap dance worse than he tap dance god damn it talking about i don't care he started bringing up other people like r kelly and chris brown i'm like come on my guy this is about crowder and his situation if you preach and promote family structure and men being men and this and that and you get caught out there you gotta take the l like it is what it is there's no matter what you're not gonna come out of this unscathed right like i remember when rg3 the black quarterback or who didn't last that long got hurt came back too soon and ended his own career i remember when he left his white wife for his new upgraded one but becky the conservative christian right winger people who liked him because that's where he stood he never really gave his opinion on his politics but you know, because he did that pro-America thing and all that, black folks just put him in that boat and the fact that he had a Becky. But if you listen to him now, he said a lot of anti-gun, uh, to me, liberal shit, so I don't rock with him, really. But they threw him in that boat, but I noticed, like, the white folks that liked him and followed him, supported him, he's got a big-ass white fan base, they were upset with him when he left his wife and upgraded. <laughs> they did not like that he divorced his wife, and they, they, they was in the comments like, heavy for a while. Like, you need to go back to your wife. You need to take care of your first family, blah, blah, blah. Like, they ain't like that. So when a person who purports to be something they're not or they don't measure up to, their fan base does uh, feel away about that. That's that's why I didn't understand O'Shea's video. It didn't make no sense. I don't know if he was grifting or whatnot. 
saying that they went after Candace because she's black and this and that. And no, he went after Candace because Candace specifically called him out personally and put his business out there in the street. And she made the threat of exposing him. That's why no one else at Daily Wire got the smoke that Candace got. Candace wanted the smoke. And again, when when Can when um Daily Wire was coming at Kanye, Candace didn't throw Kanye under the bus either. Again, you can say that's because they had a financial situation going on with him trying to buy her shitty husband's parlor company or whatever. But she did not throw him under the bus. She defended her friend as she should, despite her boss, the little hat Dan uh, Ben Shapiro. Coming out doing a tour of how Kanye was trash and anti Semitic and whatnot. So um, you can't even say like they, he sicked her on them, on Crowder, or they making her do this or whatever, or they using a black woman to do that. She doing that clearly on her own, and she clearly don't even back down to her own bosses or her own co workers because a lot of people at the job all did the same little uh, Kanye's and anti Semitic rant when they was on the tour doing that. But that's it. Damn Crowder You should have been Focusing on your marriage Instead of doing all George Floyd skits Changed my mind